liberty and justice for all. Cummings here. Austin Cooler here. Charles Cooler here. Griffin here. Thomas here. Ware here. motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 16th, 2023. Austin Cool, second. Motion by coming second by Austin Cool to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Citizen input? Seeing none. Meeting summary since last council meeting. Wes, fire EMS. Uh, so we had trainings on the uh, first, second, third Monday for MPO, EMS, and then fire on the third Monday for the meeting on the board. Uh, we have three individuals that have put in applications that we're interviewing for paid on call. For we EMS. only have one, we're the other two. These are for paid on call, not the full time. Oh, volunteers, okay. Oh. Volunteers, paid on Sorry. call. So we have three people that uh, have put in an application. Awesome, awesome. Uh, for volunteering, uh, one is from Columbus, one is from Marshall, and one from Lake Mills. Okay. Um, licensed? Well, the one from Lake Mills is licensed as an AMT. The one in Columbus is just finishing up basic. And one in Marshall, I believe, is might be a basic. Already. Are they already working in Marshall, too? Uh, no, he's on Marshall Fire. Yeah. But he, okay. they don't run EMS over there. Some prairie runs their right. EMS. Right. So, and to be on okay. some prairie, they have to be a paramedic. So they're right. looking at coming over here, uh, join our staff, which would be a very welcome sight. Mm -hmm. And the one is uh, the one they're interviewing on Monday, the 11th, is a AMT. She was running with Lake Mills CMS. Her husband used to be on our department uh, many years ago, <coughs> and she wants to keep her license up, and so she'll be getting interviewed on. Monday. Do we have a limit of how many we can hire? We can hire all three? We can hire all three. Okay. But as far as the full-time one, we still only have the one applicant. Uh, I thought there was two. One backed out. He took another job. Exactly. So I sent out an email last okay. week saying, we've got to get this stuff scheduled. And I have heard nothing. So. And the one is still interested. I, I had reached out to him. So he was interested as of last week. But the other one had gotten a job. So that'd be the one from uh, Nina Ace. Menashe. His name huh? is Daniel Ace, right? He's the one He's still interested. Out. He's the one I think that backed out. I thought Daniel Ace backed out. Yeah, there's someone we with Riley. It's in the yeah. email. Yeah. So I have, I'm going to apologize. I've been dealing with my mother, so I've been yeah. uh, looking well, at a whole lot of emails. Well, the other guy's got it, too. So just double yeah. check to find out, because we should really get them scheduled, even if it is just the one, just so the guy knows yes or no, you know, if we're interested or not. Yeah, because the one from the Nina Menash area, I've worked with him before. I know who he is. Okay. Uh, so I have some history with him. And I couldn't tell you which word again. That would have been pretty sure Matt Riley. Uh, that might be one, one that's still in. Ooh, Matt Riley. Matt Riley. There's a Riley person. He's still in. Yeah, he's the one okay. that's in. Good. Uh, I know him personally. Okay. So. Yeah, if you guys want me to get that scheduled for you, let me know so we if he's good, let's not lose it. Yeah. Especially since we have nothing else coming in. I as I said I haven't looked at a whole lot of emails lately because I've been yeah. dealing with issues on the personal side. Sure. All right. All right. Anything else? Uh, if we're good. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, library. No Kelly. Water and light, Tim? The water and light dealt primarily with uh, the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, it's progress in the approving or recommending to the council approval of the water bills. bills. Yeah. Didn't you say that it looks like it, they're still pushing when we were talking at Public Works, something's still going to be a little bit behind on the plan? Yeah, they had talked about the uh, leper. You can't get MCCs in their switch gears. They push that back out another six months. 
But is it still going to be done in 25? No. No. That but that won't that hurt the road. What's that? That won't hurt the road construction. No. Anything else, Tim? No. All right. Parks. Mr. Gay. Where'd you go? He left. He left. Oh, he doesn't want to talk? That's no problem. Oh, that's right. He did. That's right. He has practice. <coughs> go ahead. Well, um, last night we had a meeting. We discussed um, the rental agreements. And we have tabled that, or not really tabled, we sent it to the lawyer for some changes, and then it'll come back at a future date yeah. after it goes back through in February, I think. Mm -hmm. And also the fees, which I think is on here. No, the rental agreement's on here. No, just the agreement was on here. No fees yet. So we no, took it, but we took it off, right? Right. Yeah. Well, it's still on. Well, the rental agreement's still on because I put it, it on in case right. it was. Yeah. Correct, in case it would go through. Yeah. Right. Right. And then we talked about the park fees, too. Yeah. And also made some changes that we're going to run through, too. So, so we'll come back in February after our next meeting. So we'll, we'll end up tabling D. Okay. Yep. Not a problem. Thank you. You're it welcome. seemed like it went a little better. At least Brian Henning was here at this meeting. I was gonna, I was gonna bypass it if it didn't. Yeah. I would have tabled it. Yeah. So it, it was helpful that that he was here because he wasn't at the meeting we had before that, and it seemed like that ended up being a complete waste of time because then we had to do it all over again. So hopefully we're on the right track and put that mess behind us and get the contract signed and away we go. All right, public health and safety. Yep. Public health and safety dealt with a, the holiday parade, a request to hire a lieutenant, and a retirement, all of which will be coming before council later on this meeting. Very good. Thank you. Public works. It's a pretty short agenda. We talked a little bit about upcoming um, construction projects that we should probably get started on, you know, for planning and preparing for. Other than that, there was nothing additional. Um, other than the light pole? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be being installed soon. Yeah. One Hopefully of the by the end of the year at the Four Corners. Let there be light. Then we won't have a wreath on it. Let there be more light. <laughs> It'll only be a week. <laughs> we'll live. We'll live without one wreath. I'll get over it, but just expect a phone call. I can get oh, well, at least one. I'll bring a wreath down. There you go. We'll hang something up on it. Fantastic. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. So I, I got you. I'm I just sure. like big picture of the mayor. I'm like, right. <laughs> All right, new business. I still don't know why we have that. Nothing's there. Item six: recommendations of the boards, committees, and commissions. Public health. Tim. The uh, committee reviewed the application, a special event application for a holiday parade to be take place this uh, December 9th. It unanimously recommended to the council approval of the holiday parade for December 9th. It will be taking place from 5 p.m. going from the old Casey's building, West Madison Street, North Monroe Street, Dickinson Street, into the park. It's the same as it has been in past years. Uh, talked with the police chief, he had no problems with the parade route. And he says there's been no issues. Other than they go too slow. There's a lot of walking. <laughs> I, could, I could ask them to run. Make them run this time. Mirror that to see if you can run it. <laughs> so see how fast you can do it. I'm just making a motion to <coughs> approve the special event parade, or special event holiday permit holidays. for the holiday parade, December 9th from 5 p.m. going from Casey's to the park. Second. Motion by town, second by Austin Cool to approve the event. All right, any questions? Do we know how many they have in it this year? Don't they kind of tell us how many floats? No? Well, I know they have a big plane. They have a big what? A plane float. A plane? A plane float. Oh, yeah. It's right by my It train. is really cool. It was a train oh. last year. Yeah. Got it. So this I one's a it. plane. It's a really cool. Nice. <laughs> Just well, that's good. Take pictures. I won't be there, unfortunately. All right. All right. Motion by Thomas. Second by uh, Austin Cool. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Request to fill the lieutenant position. Chief Sorensen is recommended to be promoted from his position as sergeant to 
to the open position of lieutenant. Uh, Sergeant Warner has been a member of the Waterloo Police Department since August of 2017. And he is currently a sergeant with the department, has been for a little, approximately a year, a little over a year. Mm -hmm. During that time, he has attended the three-week leadership in police organization training and has been taking on added duties, administrative role duties, doing report reviews, purchasing equipment, doing background investigations, uh, being involved in the hiring process last year of the, the employees that we got hired. In addition to that, uh, over the time that he's been here, he's been through numerous schools. Dave's been a police officer. Oh, back, started back in the state of Colorado in 1993 before moving to Wisconsin. He was a sergeant with the, it was a Cambridge? The town of Oakland. Town of Oakland. When he was working part-time uh, also, so he had administrative duties there. I've worked with Dave, I've uh, spoke with Dave about his training, and uh, I feel very confident that he is going to be able to fulfill this position. When would it go into effect? Uh, effective December 23rd. Okay. So it was with great pleasure that I am going to make the a motion to uh, promote Sergeant Warner to the position of lieutenant, effective December 23rd. This is not going to be adding a new position to the police department. It's, it's just filling an existing position. Mm -hmm. Chair for the second. Second. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I want to second it. <laughs> coming coming second, 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 second to two. Second by everyone. <laughs> second by Charlie <laughs> to approve uh, the, the promotion <coughs> to Mr. Warner. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Can you ride a horse yet? Can, I've been able to ride a horse for a long, long time. I know, but I still want you to <coughs> ride that horse in something here. Maybe not the holiday parade, unless you're pulling me behind the sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll be mushy to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations. Thank yes. you. Congratulations. Thank Request to fill open position that was just apparently created. Uh, Chief Sorensen would like to fill a position, and Nate Cullen is going to be retiring the end of this year, thus creating an open position. Uh, the committee discussed this and is going to unanimously recommend the council approve the filling of the position. The only questions we have is last year, we did a $5,000 signing bonus Mm -hmm. And we also made concessions in the reference to vacation. My question is, is that going to be carried over into 2024? Does this need to go to finance? Well, since we don't have any applicants at the moment, right? So we can probably have that conversation at finance then? In two weeks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This would prevent him from posting the open position. Is that something... Do we want to have this conversation, or do we want a motion and second, and then have the conversation? Yeah, it's a second piece to it, so we okay. could do the motion for the position, and, and then, then we could always do the particulars of it. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thomas, make a motion okay. to authorize the chief to fill to post the it. and post the open position. Coming to the second motion by Thomas, second by coming to. Uh, uh, Allow the posting of the open position. Any questions? So, when you post it, isn't that <coughs> where you would have to say there's a signing bonus or no, laterals? Pardon me? When you interview. It would be well, nice. It would be nice to have it when yeah. you post it. It's an position. incentive. But you could add that to the posting at a later date. At time. a later date. Yeah. Just simply put it in for now at least to get it going. Okay. Yeah, I think we would probably have to have that, that conversation since we didn't budget for it. We didn't bring that up. We, we did it for that short term to fill before. So I think we should probably have that conversation. And if somebody calls and asks about it, you can simply say, honestly, yes, we're looking into it. We have done this before. We just kind of have to get back to you. All right? Okay. Um, 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mm -hmm. CDA, freeze agreement for 333 Portland Road. Is in your package. Everett, would you like to chat about that? <clears throat> yeah, it's a developer that's, that's looking to put up a spec building. Um, so roughly, they're unsure on the exact square footage yet. Uh, they got to do some geotech review and things like that. But looking to put up a spec building on that site. So build a suit, 10% um, office, 90% uh, industrial warehouse space like that. So. And it's for the whole property? Correct. Okay. Outside of the stuff that is on Hendrick Street and things that we're going to have to, you know, portion off. Right. We'll so. have to work out what that looks like with that grant when we do that road. So this this is uh, very similar, if not almost identical, to the freeze agreement that we had before with uh, the gentleman out of uh, Cottage Grove. So this is just a new company that we're giving them the time to, to go through it. It is, as you probably have all seen, signs are up, things are there, so just in case anybody calls, we can legally say it's just uh, on a freeze at the moment. Anybody have any questions about that? <coughs> there you go. Also go a motion to approve the freeze agreement for 333 Portland Road. Coming so second. Motion by Austin Cool, second by Cummings <coughs> to uh, approve the freeze agreement for 333 Portland Road, recommended by the CDA. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Griffin Saint. Griffin Saint. Motion carried. Madison uh, Regional Economic Partnership presentation. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, Madam Mayor and Council members. Um, I'm Jason Fields, President of Madison Regional Economic Partnership, otherwise known as MADREP, and uh, you all are familiar with Everett Buckzine, our Economic Development Specialist, uh, Frederick Flores, our Community Development Specialist, and the big man on campus, Craig Kettleson, our Enterprise Development Director. Um, we're here basically to just touch base with you all about, one, who we are, and then how we can help you um, with whatever it is your vision and strategy is, how we can be a resource and serve you all in Waterloo. And so what I would like to do is go through this presentation sort of quickly um, because we want to leave time for questions. But Madison Region Economic Partnership, MAVREPS for short, we're a holistic economic development agency. We practice what we call uh, economic development on five stools, whether it's business attraction, new business development, um, now workforce development, things such as housing, transportation, child care, uh, foreign domestic, foreign and, direct, foreign and direct investments, meaning how can we have our region uh, become a place where everybody wants to look at our region and ask and answer this question. Is our region a great place to live, work, and play? So if the answer to that question is no, then how can we make it better? And part of that is why we're here today to help great places such as your city become a recognizable place where people want to live and come and visit and stay. So, Madam Treasurer, next. So, how we do this is we are mandated by the federal government to become um, an economic development district for all eight counties. That eight county region consists of roughly a million people. And the beautiful thing about this is once we get this economic development district, how it benefits our region, you all in particular, when you're looking for potential projects or dollars, federal funding, if you're in this economic development district, what happens is you, send, you, you apply for funding, we help with some of that, we have a grant writer on staff who can help do some of that. Uh, what will happen is your application information sort of gets moved to the head of the line because we have this designation. And how we get that designation is through our process called the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. That strategy takes into consideration where are we going to go for this eight county region in the next three to five years. Our role is not to tell anybody what to do, rather is to come through a SWOT analysis, which we've done in each county, but to localize it, to come to you all and say, hey, where do you want to be in three to five years? We do the SWOT analysis and we try to help you figure that out and we devote our resources, our nine member team member, to helping you do that. Next slide. So we came through this process and we took a bunch of individuals from academia, businesses, uh, municipal leaders from all over the eight county region 
and we sat in the room for three days and determined, okay, what do we want to do? Where do we want to go? What should be our priorities? Uh, next slide. And what we came up with is the strategic vision we cover four angles. Number one, how do we grow our economy? <laughs> and in order to do that, we have to ask the question, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? Where are the opportunities? What are the threats? So when we did this SWOT analysis, we came up with these four pillars, making sure that we can grow our regional economy, reducing barriers to workforce, I meaning how do we attract individuals, keep them here? How can we accelerate business growth? And then how do we cultivate talent development? Meaning, what are we doing with our young people? Are we making sure that our region is not only attracting them, but are we keeping them? And in that, you'll see that some of the top, or top issues that we had to deal with and we still are dealing with are transportation, housing, and child care. Wherever we go, those are the top three issues that we hear in all the SWOT analysis that we've done. Next slide. And how we do that is through our data and our capabilities. And when we look at what do you want to do, where do you want to go, we make economic decisions based on up to speed current data. Meaning we take the emotion out of it and really look at, well, if you want to be uh, a community that attracts young people, if you want to look at development, what land do you have? What spaces are there? And so we have a, a data acquisition that we've done in 2023 where we use a number of data <coughs> platforms that Everett has um, access to. And if I'm correct, we'll be using and sharing here on a, daily, on a weekly basis, correct? Every Monday? No. Every Monday. Thank you. <coughs> Next slide, Madam Treasurer. And so what we've done is this is just some of the municipalities that, we, that we've helped, that we've done some contract work with. And Craig, I'll turn it over to you to have you comment on this. Yeah, I think in each of these communities that you see on the screen, we've done a contract very similar to the one that you're considering tonight. Uh, but the one where we've done the most extensive amount of service that maybe can start to look very much like what we propose here is Mount Hora. And uh, we did planning. Uh, we did visioning that Jason's talking about. Uh, we worked with their business park and marketing of that park. We helped them develop a fab lab in the high school. We helped them with a co-working space on the edge of downtown and then the Duluth Trading Office building that got built there. We were involved in that process. Um, it was a long-term commitment of time and, and basically we're brought in at two points in that process and help leverage our expertise uh, through some of this data mechanism that Jason's talking about and just our knowledge of the economy and, and try to figure out that fit. I think that's the key, right? When you do your planning process, oftentimes the economic development portion is fairly generic. We want to come in and really drill down on that. When we go through this set process and we talk to some of these communities, you ask them, what do you want to be? What types of businesses are you trying to attract? Almost invariably, they'll sort back and say, well, what do you think we should be doing? And I get that. I totally understand that. If you haven't been put through that process and really been kind of doing the deep dive into what that, what's so possible, maybe you haven't thought about that. I think that's what our job would be, to walk you through that process and help really think about that. And the one we talked about on Tuesday night is Abby Discovery, right? The biotech company that you got to town if you want to do more of that, we have a relationship with the university and the research park, and can we attract some more of that type of business? But are you interested to kind of get out of that reactive mode, to just kind of take what comes in the door and go on the front foot and proactively go out and get it and kind of market your community to it? I think that's what we're looking to do more long term through this process. Do you use people's um, comprehensive planning documents that they've created? Yeah. Yeah, we'd like to enhance that. Yeah. Certainly work with it. Yeah. Respect it from the particularly from the land use and the zoning aspect. But work on that economic development visioning piece. Mm -hmm. And what do you really want the community to look like? I yeah. think as Jason alludes to. Trevor and I can look at that again. I know we just did a five year update on a girl a couple of years ago. Right. So we'll probably have to do it again. So yeah, the real, the real Gale goal is to look at what you have and just incorporate it into the region, right? Sure. It's not to replace or do away with it. It's how do we sell the region? And one of the things that I've said is we have to get out of this uh, sort of us versus them attitude. It's the competition uh, is not, you know, Waterloo versus Madison. It's us versus Boston versus North Carolina Research Triangle. It is much more global now. And 
when you look at all the strengths and the things that we have in our region, uh, and I say this and I don't blow smoke, but you guys are positioned very well. But how do we tell that story? How do we start looking at, well, Waterloo is a great place to live, work, and play. How many people know about it? Uh, one of the things Craig and I were talking about, which I thought was just brilliant, was the, what did you say to me about the tax thing? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, market your community right now to Madison when they just got their tax bill. This is a conversation we had Tuesday night, right? How much cheaper it is here. It's a real estate developer trick, right? You want a property that somebody's sitting on, approach them, they will get their tax bill and call them, hey, you're going to sell. So right now, you should have billboards up, right? Don't like your taxes? Move to Waterloo. So he's saying that to me, I'm like, that's freaking brilliant, man. We, we, we should really do that because, again, you are positioned very well, but how do we just support that? Uh, next slide, Madam Church. All right, those are our ugly mugs. Uh, me, when I had short hair, um, it was a little heavier at the time. But So myself, Everett Buckzine, Frederick Flores, um, will be, you know, basically you have resource and access. We will all be working, but we'll be the project leads on that. And here's the team uh, that we have, uh, myself and the, 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 the rest of the Mary crew. Uh, but the, the beauty of this is you get all of us, right? It's, this is not a, uh, you know, one done, wham, bam, thank you, man, we're done. No, this is a long-term relationship and investment and partnership. And again, we're mandated by the federal government to do these kinds of things. One of the reasons, and if I can, Madam Mayor, just talk about, so what's in it for me, right? One of the the 800 pound question or the gorilla in the room. Uh, the ability to win. You know, I, you know, I'm from Milwaukee. Um, nothing wrong with Madison, but when I looked at our area and our region, for me it was very important that we start having other people at the table. It can't be about one municipality or one city. We don't win that way. And it's quite honestly, when you start factoring in all the things, uh, there are huge opportunities in places like Waterloo, we have to be adamant, adamant about that and tell that story. So for me, it's the ability to win and get something done. Uh, next slide. Uh, some of the scope of proposed services. Uh, again, we have a grant writer on staff. Her name is Everett as well. I'm partial to people named Everett for some reason. Uh, office hours where Everett will be here. But we also, we make sure that we have an open line of access and that we're here. Uh, business recruitment, entrepreneurship, business retention expansion. One of the data softwares that we acquired gives us the ability, and I think I should spend a little bit of time on this, is to come and talk to your community with an arm's length approach. Meaning we can come to your businesses and sort of ask them, what's going on? What do you look at? What do you need? And compile that data and present it in a report fashion to you all. One of the beautiful things about that is it sort of takes away the tension and gives people the ability to just say, hey, we want to be truthful, but we don't want to take the risk of ticking somebody off and having somebody start targeting us. So if you really want to start getting to the truth, you send in a party like ours and go, hey, what are you, what are you looking at? What do you need? What makes this place great? And you all have great stories about why you're here. We just need to tell those stories. Uh, next slide. And so why you all? Because again, you're well positioned for growth, strong manufacturing sector. Uh, you are a key place, again, when you look at geographically where you're at. You, all, you have a lot of the amenities. Uh, we need a little bit more, but, at the, but more importantly than that, we just have to tell the story about you all. We really have to tell the story. And I think that's something that this relationship we can do. <coughs> I think that was quick enough, okay? No? Didn't go too long. Well, you reversed it Tuesday, so you were just, you know, yeah. <laughs> Questions, concerns? CDA met with them Tuesday, so a lot of these guys kind of heard this story before, so if anybody else has any questions. So basically, Everett is still our guy. He's still going to be with us. He's just now under the Matt Ruff umbrella, so we're actually getting Everett on steroids. We have a whole lot more to go with him. Oh, that's funny. You go ahead and Barry. Barry our utility manager. Yeah. A lot of um, people ask, like, when we hired Everett, like, what 
what we would consider a win for him. Yeah. You know, as far as progress that we bring in to the community. Mm -hmm. um, he obviously works on a lot of things that don't work out. I mean, yeah. as part of the game, you know, he's shuffling a lot of people, whatever. But what would you consider like a win for the community? Is that something that you have to have a certain amount of growth in a certain amount of time or just getting the name out there? Or what, what would you consider a win? Like, how would we evaluate you in the next right. two to three years? I think it's, it's a couple of ways you can look at that. Um, now, I'll answer that in a couple of ways. For me personally, a win would be to leave here and after six months or so, you all go, hey, we brought MADREP in and we can see what they're doing. There's some kind of return mm -hmm. on that investment. If that means our revolving loan fund invests in a business here to help get that business growing. If that means introducing you to, uh, for example, we have, uh, we had the Netherlands, Spain, <coughs> France come. We've had a public company that's looking to expand workforce. It would be to increase those kinds of relationships to put you on a map so that when these kinds of companies come here and need housing or residential places, are they considering Waterloo as a place for them to have employees live? Employees that you want, right? And so I think for me, the win would be number one, not to say what the win would be, because then that would mean me defining it, but to ask you, what would you consider a win? A win for me would be to look at one of your businesses and go, hey, let's see if we can help this business grow. But ultimately, in the bigger scheme of things, I would love for you all to say, hey, we brought those guys in. And based off our ITR, the investment time and return, we see a positive result. Whatever, however you measure that. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a housing project. Maybe it's, uh, hey, there's a company looking to locate here. We need to meet with the utilities. Can they come and can you start seeing what, what can happen here? So I think it's a number of ways to, to measure that, but ultimately have to be to hear, you know, we made this investment, we spent some time, and here's the measurable or solid return, mm -hmm. whatever that may be. If that answers the question. So yeah, somewhat. <laughs> well, I mean, say it's hard because it's hard to yeah. judge when you're working on products, they all they don't all come in. You know, and, but yet they're working on them, which I understand. But at some point, I mean, the city council is going to want to see progress. Yep. And I just, I just want to get an idea of what you consider progress. I think it has to be, it has to help be defined by what we think we can do, what's measurable, what we can measure, mm -hmm. and how fast we can do it. Right. If we're talking about a company coming and locating here, that's that that's not going to be a six month deal. Correct. And that's yeah. what I'm getting at. But a but year I'm, from now or two years from now. How do you judge if you, if you don't have anybody coming here? I mean, there's got to be something. I mean, if you can if you can take yeah. a company that's already here and they're expanding and growing and you're helping them out, obviously that's that's a win for Waterloo. I think you can measure it a couple ways. You can measure it from a marketing perspective, meaning how many people know about Waterloo, and you can measure that via social media marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. If there are, for example, one of the things that we're thinking about, uh, we have a magazine that we circulate and we highlight certain places. And my thought process now is, how do we highlight you, highlight you all? Maybe it's a front cover page in 2025, because we already are doing 2020, we're doing 2024, right? I think yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. done already. And so, are there 300 some thousand people now looking at Waterloo from across the country? Are there now more people attracted and looking at, okay, we wanna see something done. Uh, is there a strategy where we look at the taxes and send out, I don't know, some kind of marketing piece and there's more inquiries? So I think to be technical about it, we'd have to define it because the last thing we want to do is shoot for the moon um, and then fall short with some unrealistic expectation. So that's something I think we all work on. Okay. And knowing we had, we call also Eric at uh, Eric Aaron 2.0, Aaron Welty was somebody we had in here a while ago, and yeah, you probably remember her. Yeah. And it took over four years to get Perry's done and get the Mineral Street yeah. apartments, and things don't happen fast, and we do realize that. Oh, it ain't gonna take me four years, man. Oh, that's good, because <laughs> I don't have that the patience for four years. <laughs> so, I mean, I know some of this stuff does take some time, and that was a big deal, to get rid of all that property, and there was a lot of moving parts, and. Unfortunately, some of it's still a moving part with the solarium now. Measurable um, momentum. Yes. Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah. Right. 
Oh, we gonna get something done. I can guarantee it. <laughs> it won't be four years. I, I like to win. I am very competitive, and these guys are telling me. Uh, and I move fast, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Four years. Uh, that's, yes, that's, I know. Nah. A year? Yeah, we we we're getting something done. Anyone else have any questions? That's a great question, though. Yeah, what's ever done for the city in the last two years? Well, it has been quite two years, but it's getting close. Bringing more eyes to this. Look what he just did here. We have a whole new team. I would say things that would not have been touched that are potentially looking to have you know, permits and potentially a mm -hmm. factory or We're building to this. So. Yeah, that takes a lot of time. I would say a big thing that Matter has helped even before entertaining this discussion of just reaching out to Jason and just getting the connections to the right people to get those right people to the table to discuss things like the DOT. You know, I was able to get 10, 15 minutes in front of the DOT secretary to discuss the Duquesne development. That wouldn't have happened before. That obviously led us down a rabbit hole that we're obviously right. dealing with now. Right. Um, it's, it's getting that awareness and that trust from the outside to get eyes here and building those relationships up so the connections are deep and the expertise is also you know falls in line with that as well and also having craig on his team he's been a part of helping waterloo for for many many years he's also the one that helped uh, get h or excuse me night souls to howie's now and i think there's still more conversations going on with that of things that he wants to do so this partnership here goes deeper than just Everett. You guys have had um, eyes on Waterloo and have helped do stuff before, so this is all good thing. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for that presentation. All right, item C, rescind the non-metro connections contract, which is goes in line with the very next one of the resolution 2023-31. So because we do have a, uh, a contract with Everett, that is to be dissolved at the end of the year, and as of January 1st, then it would um, revert to MADRA. We don't have a rescind contract, though, do we? we just sign off on it? Is that what we were talking about in the yes. email? Yes. Okay. It would just be. Yeah, so this contract, which is in there, you know, does say 45 days, but we've been having this kind of conversation now for over a month, so we're, we're well within that. So. So, so we rescind the non metro commission's contract at the end of the, end of the month. Second. Motion by Charlie Cool, second by Griffin, to rescind the non metro connections contract. Any questions? Uh, roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin Cool, yes. Charles Cool, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Ward, yes. Hasla, yes. Motion carried. Item <coughs> D, uh, the Madison Metro Economic Partnership contract, resolution 2023 20, 31. Can I just say something? It's really Absolutely. a proposal because I don't have their contract yet, so I haven't said. I haven't sent it to the attorney, so okay. it'll have to be based on the attorney approval. Is it basically the scope of work, though? Yeah, it's the scope of work with that fee associated with it. So, but then there'll be a, a, a formal contract? Yeah, so the contract will basically just, it'll outlay the description organization as well as the scope of services plus the this is the base. annual amount broken down monthly yeah. um, with the basic verbiage, right, of payment schedules and things right. like that. So. Which, going with... MADREP, we're actually reducing the annual fee to 45000 from 52, dollars correct? correct? So we're actually getting an even bigger bang for our And that will be signed by Jason in the mayor. Right. So resolution 2023-31 is to enter into a contract, which will be signed after the uh, attorney reviews it, but it's this document that's in your packet. Charles Cool, that's the motion. Austin Cool, second by motion. Motion by Charlie Cool, second by Austin Cool to approve resolution 2023 31, rescinding non metro and hiring mad rep. Any questions? Roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin Cool, yes. Charles Cool, yes. Griffin, no. Thomas, yes. Laird, yes. Hasla, yes. Motion carried. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. EMS and Fire Department Management Services contract, another one in the packet. We will be in touch and Merry Christmas, Vital. Yep. See any of you gentlemen. Thank you. Till then. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, so there's like two of them in here. There is, on purpose. Okay. One, one is the red line, line and so uh, everyone has uh, the, what, what meeting do we do this in? Do we do it in council or do we do it with the fire? No, it's finance. So if we made those changes, then everybody was comfortable with the changes that the attorney recommended. And so uh, Wes and I talked. I sent the uh, information to Christy. Uh, something like something that, like that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I sent it over to her with the changes recommended by the attorney the billing company and yes and yeah. so the changes that he made um, she agreed to right away and she redid the contract so that's the second one you have okay. where we changed the courts and changed his red line um, it was changed to all those things that the attorney wanted um, so it was just they they've signed it and I don't know Wes if how you if that's what you <clears throat> Yeah, as long as finance was good with it, uh, you know, it was, you know, it was brought up by the attorney. Uh, they're the ones that came up with the questions uh, for the changes. Um, I had a chance to meet with them actually before I met with Dean on it, and uh, I think we're good with it. Uh, for well, some of you, a uh, billing company that we currently have, Three Rivers Billing, is no longer, they've been kind of taken over by this EMS MC company. Uh, we did look at some other billing companies at the time, but the majority of the billing companies now are larger. All these smaller billing companies basically went to uh, this company, they went to IMED, they, all went somewhere else. Um, so I think we're good with what we have. Uh, our, what we're going to be paying them is the same as what we were paying the previous billing company of 7%. Um, they've made the changes without hesitation. So. Thomas made the motion to approve the utility services agreement with the EMS management Griffin's and consultants. Motion by Thomas, second by Griffin to approve the billing services agreement uh, service contract. Any questions? <coughs> Roll call. Coming yes. Austin Poole yes. Charles Poole yes. Griffin yes. Thomas yes. Wyatt yes. Tesla yes. Motion carried. Wonderful. Um, Parks. Uh, Richard, you want to table that? Yeah, I'll make a motion to table. Let me get back to my agenda. Resolution 2023. Resolution 2020, 2023 32. Until it comes back from committee. Cummings will second. Motion by Wyatt, second by Cummings to table uh, 2023 32 until it is ready. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Water and light contractors application. And this is our, our normal monthly payment process. And I do believe if I have the numbers correct, this one is, correct me if I'm wrong, $1,242,211.35? Yes. Ah, got it. <coughs> Charles Gould, so much. Cummings will second. Motion by Charlie Pool, second by Cummings to approve the payment in said amount. Roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin Pool, yes. Charles Pool, yes. <laughs> Thomas, yes. Wyatt, yes. Hustle, yes. Motion carried. Um, project tr budget tracking and funding allocation for the waste water treatment plant. And I do believe that next one is $1,417,602.49. Cummings will make that motion for that amount. I am not repeating that. <laughs> motion by Cummings, second by Cummings, <laughs> to approve uh, the funding allocation in said amount. Roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin Cool, yes. Charles Cool, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Wyatt, yes. Hasley, yes. Motion carried. 
So, Town & Country monthly report, which is also all a part of this. We have some pictures this time. Anything new to update on that, other than what we just kind of briefly <coughs> talked about earlier, just six months no. kind of and, out on something? And right now they don't know. They know that that stuff is backed up, but they do have the ability to bring in more contractors <coughs> toward the end to try to get caught up. So, to try to say the whole product's backed up six months really isn't correct, but they do know that the electric was backed up six months. Okay. That means nothing in terms of payments. I mean, at some point, people just will, if we don't have the work, they're just not going to be working until And that's what they stuff. said. They said that it's, you're going to see long periods of nothing getting done down there. Yeah. And that's, that's typical of a big project this day and age where they can't get material. Yeah. And do that. What, what percentage completion would you anticipate before a slowdown would happen? It's going to slow down now. It's already? Yeah. Okay. And it's 10 percent, 20 percent. So they said you're just going to get rid of where, like um, the truck storage shed was built. That's what they said. I'm looking at your picture. They couldn't get tin for the roof for two months, so they couldn't put anything on the inside for two months. So then you just saw nothing happen with that building. They went on to another building. They're laying block, corn, concrete, everything else, and when the tin comes in, they move back to roofing. So it's just going to be piecemeal like that for the next probably three years. So are you guys in that building then yet, or no? We're not in anything. We won't be in that. We won't be in that any building until at least next October. Even just your new building addition. Any of them. Oh, crazy. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Unfinished business, none, future agenda items and announcements. We have the parade coming up uh, this weekend, right? Yes. At five. Five, yes. Um, potentially we'll have a meeting on the 21st. It really depends. I mean, I know it's a finance night, too. So sometimes we would cancel December meetings if it's too close to Christmas or people are going to be gone. But it's mostly to do with agenda items. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I'm just asking the question. So the 21st should be our next one. Fantastic. Anything anyone else has to say? Taxes were mailed. We're all so happy. <laughs> Open up your mailbox and get out that envelope. Yes. <laughs> 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 Motion by the Cools. Charlie Cool, House of Cool to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.